and welcome to today's Wisdom of the Zodiac Summary. Today's class is taken from Wisdom of the Zodiac, Volume 2, Chapter 21, Leo. The title is Victory Within Yourself. This is a beautiful chapter and it is a story about how we identify that in us that is not our true self and we gain victory over it. And the theme being that we have to do work ourselves. We will not be cheered on by others. We will not be getting a prize at the end or any kind of accolade. We have to do the work. And in doing this work, we learn the art and science of achieving victory over ourselves. And when we do that, we will be able to have victory over anything in our life. This is a fantastic chapter. And this year, in 2013, we are blessed with two months when the Sun is in direct alignment with the zodiacal sign of Leo. It's very important, which means when you look at the theme of this chapter and the other chapters, if you read in the Leo full moon period, you will see that it is all about being a noble, beautiful, soul-centered person, making that decision to have victory. And that takes a lot of work. And a lot of that work you are going to do yourself in the cave of your being. There are a lot of symbols in this chapter. And I'm going to read a little bit from that first uh, paragraph and see what some of the meanings are and then have you think about the meanings and what it means to you. <clears throat> now remember that every page of the teaching, the Asia's Wisdom teachings, has many meanings, many layers of meanings. Torkham writes that when a teacher writes or speaks or gives a lecture, a high-level teacher, there are seven different perspectives that you can learn from any given part of the teaching. So take time to read these pages and find out what they mean for you. What I have to say is one perspective. If we sit in a group of people, each person has a different perspective. So it is important that you find the perspective that makes most sense to you and what it means to you. So let me read then from the, this chapter 21, starts on page 245, and read that first paragraph. The energy that comes from Leo is, is an energy that makes you victorious. So that is welcome news for all of us, makes us victorious. It makes you overcome your hindrances and difficulties and eventually achieve victory. The energy coming from Leo does not give you power to destroy others or achieve victory over others. This is a very important point. It is an energy that is given to you to achieve victory within yourself. If you achieve victory over yourself, you can achieve victory over cosmos. If you fail within yourself, you fail everywhere in everything. So this is the keynote. We are the key and we need to think about being victorious over ourselves, not over others. This is very important when you think, when you start the path of studying the spiritual teachings or doing meditation. Our first, pro first proclivity is usually how we see the problems surrounding us, the problems that other people have around us, maybe our family, our children, our loved ones, or the people we work with. We immediately see what's wrong with them. How come they're not joyful? How come they're not meditating? How come they're not being vegetarians? And so on. The first thing we do is see what's wrong with everybody else and say, well, they're bad and how am I supposed to be a disciple in this context? Well, this theme of Leo is to say to you, forget, forget about everybody else and focus about conquering yourself, being victorious over yourself. Why is that? Because Leo is the power of the sun. Every sign in Leo, every ruler in it, every planet in it is focused on the sun. And being that, you have tremendous power and energy at this time. Whether you are Leo or not makes no difference. If you are a disciple, you are going to create every part of the zodiacal signs, all 12 of them. So, this has the power to destroy others or achieve victory over others, neither of which are the path for us. We are not supposed to be working to achieve victory over others or power over others. 
Now, how do we destroy others? Of course, there are physical and emotional means that we destroy others. For example, doing harm to them or um, some kind of uh, belittling remarks, for example. But there are subtle ways, the way we think, the way we feel, our jealousies and hatreds, our silent competitions, and sometimes even think the power we destroy others <clears throat> by taking their power away from them, by taking their possibilities and potentials away from them, even taking the possibility of change and growth within us. So these are very, very important for us to see what are our tools and what is our power and to use that power to change ourselves and gain victory over ourselves, not on others. So this is the first key. Turn it over to yourself. Continuing to read, man came to this planet as a beam of light dressed in a coat, a skin or body. This skin must be taken away from the beam of light so that the beam shines out in its splendor. So in our process of incarnation, in our socialization and acculturation process, we put on many skins. When we become teenagers, we, become, we put on many skins. What is the most popular way to dress? What is the most popular music? What is the most popular thing to say? And we take these on from our religion, from our culture, from our parents, from our schooling, and they become who we are, we identify with them. So we, our light is covered up with those skins. So this whole idea is to identify that those skins take on a life of their own. And in this symbology, they become like the lion that is out devouring us, devouring who we truly are. And that's the symbolic story behind this Leo full moon. That there, uh, there is inside of us this devouring beast that is trying to take the truth and reality out of us and out of everybody else. And that is nothing but fear, nothing but a mirage. It's not reality. But you see, we get addicted to it. We think it's real and we treat it like it is the king of our universe. That's where that symbology of Leo comes in. So here, the story starts with a labor in Hercules. That is told on page 246 and 247. And these are, it's a great story. And remember that the story of Hercules is not necessarily Greco-Roman in origin. It is actually it comes from ancient India thousands of years ago. And that story traveled to Egypt and then made it to the European theater and it came to us. So the labor of Hercules in Leo is a labor that is told over and over again in many mythologies and it is again told in this story. And it is a story that this disciple is on the path of becoming an initiate. And in order to become an initiate, he has to conquer one labor after another. And it is called labor. Isn't that interesting? It is not entertainments of Hercules. These are the labors of Hercules, which means it is something that he is doing on his own. When we are laboring, we are doing the work by ourselves without anybody cheering us on. We have to be doing it. So here's a story that the great one who is watching over the initiation process of Hercules calls Hercules' teacher and says, is Hercules ready for the next battle? And the teacher says, yes. So he says, well, there is this wild lion in Nemea who is eating and devouring the people. And we want Hercules to go and conquer this lion. So Hercules goes and uh, decides that he is going to go ahead and take this labor on. And remember, um, in this story, Hercules is not discussing and arguing and finding ways of escape with his teacher. Whatever the teacher says, he understands that this is part of the process for him, that he has to do it, and he has learned the art of occult obedience, which is a topic all in its own, something for you to consider and think about. What does that mean? When you decide you are going to be on the path of discipleship, on the path of initiation, who are you going to obey and what are you going to obey? So this is another story that's within the story. Now, Hercules, Hercules is told to go ahead and take up his arms and says, go ahead and uh, conquer the lion. So the first temptation was to use artificial means to capture the lion. And then he says, I can't use any artificial means. I'm going to listen to the voice of the lion. Think about the lion inside of you. 
how many ways that voice comes out and talks to you, how you are told to make excuses, to make conclusions about life based on your own self-interest and so on. Think about the multitude of voices that you hear every day coming out from inside of you, how sometimes they steer you in the right direction, sometimes in the wrong direction, so you have to listen to that inner voice. So he is now listening to the voice, searching for the lion, and trying to find where it's coming from. First he has to find the lion. Isn't it true that First, we have to find the lion that's inside of us. Which part is it? Is it an emotional lion? Is it a mental lion? Is it an educational lion? Is it our cultural or religious bias lion? Is it what our mom and dad told us or our friends impressed on us? Or what's the cultural of the media telling us that we are impressing in ourselves and making it the real part of ourselves? So Hercules takes his arrows and starts shooting, trying to catch the lion. Doesn't work. Then he finds out that the god of lion went into a deep cave. So he chases after the, the lion and goes into the cave. As soon as he enters one door, he finds out the lion has gone out the other door, and he finds out that the lion came behind him. Isn't that the truth? When we feel that some nasty habit of thought or feeling or self-depreciation, self-hatred uh, comes up, as soon as we see it be chased out of one end, it comes up very subtly in other things in our life. Take a moment and think, in how many ways are physical, emotional, mental issues, problems and habits have long tails and they're always appearing inside of us, always appearing anywhere around us, we just have to look. In how many subtle ways, when I thought about this, I thought in how many subtle ways do we hide behind a facade or a mirage of who we think we are and then we hide and we really know inside of us there's a lion inside of us that's trying to devour. This is not the noble, beautiful lion that we think about in mythology, but this is a lion that's devouring us, the essence in us. And by association, whatever we think we are, we are also doing to other people. If we have the self-doubt um, kind of language that we use toward ourselves. We're using that for other people as well, to our children, our spouses, everybody that we talk to. We use that same devouring kind of language. So be aware that the lion is not hurting only you, but everybody around you. So what does Hercules do? He finds out by listening and observing that if I am going to chase this lion in one door and out the other, he is only going to reappear again in my space. So he decides to close the openings of the cave and trap the lion inside the cave with him. Now that's very interesting. He goes into the cave and he faces a lion with no weapons, with nothing but his bare hands. The story tells us that he um, conquers the lion chokes it, then he skinned the lion and took the skin. Returning to his teacher, he laid the lion skin at his teacher's feet and received permission to wear it on his body. This is pregnant with symbolism. So think, first you go into your cave. If you want to solve a problem, a serious issue in your life, lay down the excuses, lay down the blames, lay down he did, she did, they did. Lay it all down, go deep into yourself, and we're told this by many great ones, go deep inside of yourself to pray, close the doors and windows, and say, I'm going to face you. You're going to face those things in you that hurt and belittle your divinity and also the divinity of others around you. They foul your speech, the way you listen, the way you interact with life. And you're going to take the life out of that false being. That is a symbolism behind killing. It is not a physical act of killing a lion. It is symbolic. And it's interesting here when you think about yourself, if you want to be an initiate, if you want to be on the path of serious discipleship, there comes a time 
when you can no longer make excuses. You can no longer make excuses and say, he did this, they did this. You are going to face, you are going to slay those excuses, you are going to take the life out of them, and you're going to be so detached from it that you don't say, this skin belongs to me and I'm going to wear it. You go and you put it. You completely detach from them and you say, here it is for my teacher, here's what I can do. I'm not attached to any of these things. Even my looks, my age, my profession, my degrees, my home, my clothes, and so on, none of it makes any difference. When you are able to do that at 100% and lay it down that you are not attached to it, you don't have any desire to own it, to have it for yourself, that is the time that your teacher will give you the permission to wear it on your body. Even when you wear it on your body, it is not a point of ego and vanity and show off. Look what I have. It is a point of conquering. It doesn't matter whether you have it on you or not have it on you. You're completely detached. This story is, is fantastic because it is showing us that we have many, many self-interests. And these self-interests have to be looked at from our own perspective. And look at some of them are discussed on these pages, page 247. The first area of self-interest, for example, is sex. How many things we have done in our life that we're not proud of concerning our sexual or intimate relations with people. Think about it in terms of all the history of humanity and how much devastation human beings suffer because of that very simple concept. Number two, the second area of self-interest is food. How much we have devastated the whole planet because of the lack of food or too much food. Overplanting, overfishing, overhunting. Look at there's no animal, water, air, plants that's safe. We have devastated our natural resources. Even though we've done that, there are areas in the world where people go hungry. They sleep hungry, children don't have enough to eat. And other areas in the world where people are so big that they suffer from cardiovascular disease and diabetes because there's too much there's too much greed for food think about how important that is to find a balance to find a balance to detach detach so it doesn't control you the third area of self-interest is possessions is it our job to have 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 buy 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 collect 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 where in the Western countries we not only have our garages full of things, but we also rent space to put things that we never look at again. Look what a disease that is, having so much money, having so many things, having <clears throat> clothes upon clothes, having jewelry upon jewelry, having self-interest ad nauseum in our life. We want to possess people and things and control things. But that is an area of self-interest that has to be slain. That's what the, the keynote here. Fourth area is our positions. And I would add to that our opinions, our degrees, our belief systems. Look what's happening all over the world because of religious differences. How sad it is that we all have a religious understanding and faith, or spiritual understanding and faith, yet we don't understand the keynote of it, which is tolerance and love and freedom. Freedom for other people to believe what they want to believe and actually embrace that. Embrace the, the beauty and the goodness of a human being rather than see ugliness in them because they don't believe what we believe. This is really interesting. We have racism. We have sectarianism. We have position in politics, finance, that we think is the best in the world. And yet, look what it's doing to us. It's devastating us. We're giving fire and light to it. So these are some of the ideas of what is it that is your self-interest that has become the devouring lion in you. This is what you have to find out in this Leo full moon. And what are the ways that you can do that? Four ways are given here, and I'll briefly look at them with you. And I would really recommend that you read this beautiful, beautiful chapter, especially here at page 248 where he says, What were the steps Hercules took to kill the lion? 
These are four steps that you can develop, and I found them deeply meaningful and require some serious meditation. For example, the first step was to throw away all your weapons. What are your weapons? Your excuses. Self-aggrandizement. Self-putting down. Or making ourselves like we're the answer to everybody's problems or solutions. So you're going to put all your weapons aside. Every single one of them. Because you don't need them. You don't need any crutches when you are going to slay that what is not real in you. The second step was to really see and observe all the actions of the lion. You are going to learn the art and science of observation. There's a beautiful chapter in the Consciousness Volume 1 book by Torkam Saradarian. It's called Observation. There's a beautiful chapter and it really gives you a step-by-step -step of understanding what is observation and how to observe. That and the third step. The third step was to pursue the lion to analyze its every move and the effect of those moves. <clears throat> those two steps show me the essence and importance of learning scientific meditation. When you learn meditation, you are looking at things as they are. You are looking at the truth and the reality and not coloring it by non-facts. You are looking at the facts. And as you get more advanced in your meditation, you not only learn how to look at the physical facts, but you can see the and sense the emotional facts, the mental facts, the spiritual facts, the things that are behind the scenes of events. So that when you look at any event that is devastating either you, your family, or your nation, or your group, you are able to see what is really going on. And when you see the truth, you can take the steps to resolve that problem. Now the fourth step was to enter the cave. And I really love that imagery, and I thought about that, and there are many, many traditions that talk about the cave, the darkness in the cave that you enter into before you are given birth. You can think of the womb and the darkness of it, and how when you are born into light, that darkness then gives to light, but you have to be in that process of darkness. You have to look at yourself in total honesty and openness and not allow anything else to remove your power to observe and solve your own problems. I find that if we learn how to conquer ourselves and solve our own problems, we develop a sensitive approach to humanity. We understand how much pain and hurt people suffer, how much it takes to strive, how much it takes to transform ourselves. And we are not in a rush to condemn either ourselves or others. We're patient, we're loving, we're caring, and we develop a long-term view of the process. This is so important in the way we approach ourselves and approach our loved ones when we want change to happen. First, we go into that inner deep cave inside of us, observe and watch reality and truth, and then take the steps. By the same measure, we allow other people to do that and allow them the opportunity also to learn. This is so such a beautiful, beautiful chapter. And let me read the last two paragraphs for you and have you think about it. This is on page 249. Whenever you start thinking about self-interest, from now on remember the lion. When you have problems in your family, remember the lion and ask, are these things happening because of my self-interest? Am I destroying something because of my self-interest, vanity, and ego? If the answer is yes, stop it. Sometimes we only want to see things from our perspective and don't want to allow others their perspective. And the whole secret, really, of being group conscious, family conscious, universal conscious, is to allow people and different members of your community to have their opinions, their ideas about what's going on in their life. So you're going to think about that and not have self-interest even in how you translate what's going on in life around you. This month is the month in which we can control and master all in us that devours other people. This is really heavy. 
that devours other people. How do you devour your essence, your higher self, and how do you devour other people? On the internet you can see this racist, misogynistic comments and statements that people make all over, and they're so proud of it. Why? Why do we do that? You're going to see, can I not do that? For example, gossiping about others means to eat them. When you gossip about someone, you eat his reputation, his soul, and his heart. Wow! When you hate someone, you eat him. When you are jealous of someone, you eat him. When you misuse someone for your own pleasure, you eat him. You must stop all this lion-like activity. That's powerful. And really we have to think about that, in how many ways we devour other people, other people's beauty and happiness. How do we devour up other people's joy? We take their joy away from them. Not just our children, but our adults. People who we don't even know. We say nasty things or we contradict things. So this month, you are going to take time to look at what is wild and has a life of its own inside of you. Be neutral. Don't go on one side or the other and just look at it. Go deep in your cave and find out what you need to do to stop devouring your higher self and devouring other people. Isn't that beautiful? Let's do a meditation now. I will guide us and um, follow me and repeat after me. We will have a brief meditation on the keynote and then we will say three ohms. Alright, so sit up nice and straight. Relax and close your eyes. And put your attention out of yourself. Take a deep breath. <sighs> and just put all your worries outside. This is the time to find out how you're going to increase your own nobility and your own beauty and become the master and the king of your universe. Follow me and repeat after me, please. O oh, Thou who gives sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual Son. hidden in a disk of golden light that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Now imagine as we say three ohms, beautiful sun and all the layers of the sun and let it radiate everywhere in the world. after me. Let the energy of light from the heart of Leo come and enlighten our minds. Remembering that the Leo is represented by the sun, that righteous sun that shines over everything. And let it shine. Now meditate on the following seed thought. I dedicate myself to light. What does it mean that I dedicate myself to light? Ask that question and take a few minutes to answer that question.
what are some tangible things that you can do that will increase the light in your life. Let us say the great invocation together, and as we say each phrase, visualize what is going on in the higher worlds to bring that light, that love, and the power and direction in our life and seal the door where the devouring evil lives. Let us together say the great invocation, visualizing everyone in the world saying it with us from the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men, let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men, May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Repeat after me this beautiful mantra, imagining our brothers and sisters all over the world in unity. There's so much pain and misery in the world now. Let us pray to bring that misery to an end and love and healing be part of our life. Repeat after me, please. The sons of men are one and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate. Outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Oh. 
Thank you for joining me. If you would like to take time to meditate on four days during the full moon period, or five or seven, which is recommended in the wisdom teachings, take these four concepts for your seed thought. Light, love, beauty, and freedom. Take each one and meditate on it for one or two days. Each day during the full moon period, meditate on one of those and ask questions. One of the best and most scientific ways to meditate is to take a seat thought and ask questions about it. What does it mean? How do I increase it in my life? What is the result of increasing it? So thank you for joining me and it is a pleasure always to be with you. I recommend heartily that you read these books, Wisdom of the Zodiac. There are four volumes. They're a collection of Torquem's writings and the volume two will be using covers Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. Each one is used for three months this year we have two Leo full moons, so this second volume will be used for four months. I recommend you read these books because they give you the wisdom of the great universal energies that are around us. And remember that wisdom is deep. It comes from the highest sources, and each of us has just one fragment of that wisdom. And together, as we think about these and meditate on them month after month, our collective wisdom will come together and hope that it becomes a leavening process in humanity. So much pain and suffering that is needless and useless that human beings are suffering now. We can help lessen and slowly eliminate once we are able to eliminate it from our life. So radiate these four points over and over during this month and read these chapters and join me next time and uh, I hope to see you again next month for the wisdom of the zodiac. Thank you for being with me.